Welcome to church, you guys. Uh, my name is Jesse, and I've got a joke for you. You ready? Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Worship. Let's go. One more step, one more exhale. As I fall away, leave. Feel my heart as it's racing down the path you set for me. When the road feels unending, there's a promise you reveal. When these days leave me empty, you sustain me even still. With every breath, you are reviving these burning lungs. You keep me going when I can't run. Got me my strength till the work is done. Done. Take me, won't let anxiety face me. Whatever comes, count me in, count me in. Oh, I, even when my legs are weary, I'm not gonna give up that easy. Whatever comes, count me in, count me in. guys ever seen a little kid raise their hands up to their dad? They do it because they need their dad, because they want to be close to him. And I'm sure you've seen people do that in worship. I mean, we do it all the time. We do it because we know that we need God and because we want to be closer to God. Now, maybe you've never raised your hands in worship before. Maybe you have. Either way, I want to invite you as we sing together. If you want to feel close to God, if you want to show God how much you need him, raise your hands in worship. Not because I'm asking you to, not because other people are doing it, but because you know that you need God and you want to be closer to Him. So come on, let's worship. When I'm drowning, oceans raging all around me. Through the thunder and the waves, you're constant. You're my Rushing through this broken vessel You're the calm within the current Hope rising through the storm You'll never leave me It doesn't matter what I'm facing No, when I'm facing And 
this mercy You had every right to leave me All my sin had left me stranded But your love has brought me home You'll never leave me It doesn't matter what I'm facing No When I'm facing water with me because I'm getting really into this worship at home thing. Um, you know, a funny thing, the whole rest of the episode is all about worship, but before we get into that, I have a couple questions for you. What was your favorite song when you were little? You know, I, I wasn't too into music, so my favorite songs are mostly like show openers. Um, if there's an adult in the house, maybe you could grab them because they would probably remember this song. Do 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 if you, if you know what that is, go ahead and write it in the comments. Um, I'm gonna give you a second to talk about it. What was your favorite song when you were little? Like, little, little. Okay, so now that we know what your favorite song was when you were little, who is your favorite singer or band who loves Jesus now? All right, you guys, so I know that you just said who your favorite singer is right now, but we've got a verse song in this episode that is just so awesome. Let's go ahead and watch it. A one and a two and a three. Hang, Hang on, on for the, the loop. Loop. It's getting there. <sighs> I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And I'm Luke. Yay! Welcome to the show, Luke. We're so excited to have you here. I'm honored to be here, guys. So since we're talking about worship, we thought that we should bring in a bona fide worship leader to talk to us. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Luke. Well, uh, I love music. I love long walks on the beach. Uh, I've been doing music all my life. And seven years ago, I became a worship leader. I've been doing it ever since. Back two years ago, got together with some close friends and we decided to write some new worship music and that is how Switch Music started. No that way. is so cool. So since we have you here, I wanted to ask you some questions that I've always wondered about worship. Yeah, yeah? I'd love to answer any questions you've got to the best of my ability. Okay, great. So worship is typically what we call the time at church where we collectively get together and sing songs. So I've seen some people raise their hands and I've seen some people kneel. Is there a correct posture for when I'm singing? Yeah, well, yeah, speaking of, are there any uh, new worship postures that we should be aware of, like one, mm -hmm. like one of these? Okay. Or... And should I take singing lessons so I can worship better? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, also, uh, why do we call it worship? Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 and are we doing it wrong if we sing mostly fast songs but only one slow song? Huh? Yeah. That's a good one. 
Am I supposed to be doing a challenge with you guys? Is that yes, why I'm here? Yes, yes. Yeah, but we, I mean, we have a lot of questions about worship. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. Look, first, worship is a lot more than music. It's about participating in God's story with your whole heart and soul and mind. Okay, but only if we participate with the correct hand motions, right? Where'd you get that idea from? <gasps> you know, the old praise power video. Oh, uh, yeah. What is praise power? <laughs> Judy Joy, and this is Praise Power. You are watching our advanced moves video, so if you haven't already watched our beginner moves, go ahead and eject this tape and put in tape one. Now, you look like you're ready to wow your worship leader with wonder. Let's do this. Building off of that step touch we mastered, let's go ahead and increase difficulty and just wave one arm. Wave your troubles away, that's right. Go ahead and take your free hand, and anytime those lyrics say love, devotion, or heart, just tap your chest. Now close your eyes. Really feel it. Now only close your eyes when you've mastered the first part of this move. Let's build off of that knee pop we learned in the beginner stages. Let's put some juice in this jubilation. Raise those arms in air. Now make concentric circles towards yourself. Now, this move will take some practice, but we'll create a worship stance that says there's some excitement in my exultation. Here's a little Judy Joy praise power secret. These moves can be utilized outside the church experience. We're gonna take these moves into the world at large. We're getting groceries and count your blessings. Oh, oh, Scott's got the right idea. Drop to your knees. Thank God for grace. Head to protection. Oh, yeah. Scott's got it. Spread the good news. Put some motion in your devotion and practice these moves until they become second nature. I'm Judy Joy, and this has been Praise Power. Classic. I oh. do not know what that was. Oh, that happens a lot here on this show. Okay, so I agree that worship is more than just singing, mm -hmm. but there's not a perfect posture that you have to get to. Is there a perfect song that we have to sing in order for God to listen? No, no, we worship one God, but there's so much variety in how we worship him. Huh. That's good. Ooh. Oh, look, your hand. Okay, hey. just grab the card. It okay, won't bite. You're safe. It says, this challenge is called New Song, Old Lyrics. Ooh. Choose the lyrics to a popular old praise song, then choose a song style card. You'll perform the lyrics with an entirely new tune. Fun. Okay, okay so this side is song, this side is song style. Okay. Mystery Hand told me earlier. Okay, great. Uh, All right. You go first. Oh, okay, cool. This one and this one. I'll take nice. the rest. Oh, okay. So the song that I got is, uh, oh, I've got the joy, 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 joy. Woohoo! And the style is country. I got this little light of mine in the style of K-pop. Um, I have Jesus Loves Me in the style of death metal. I cannot wait. Let's do it. Yeah! Oh, okay, okay. All right, let's see how this goes, okay? I got the joy, joy, joy. Okay, it's about to happen, it's about to put on. You guys didn't know about no little light of mine, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh my, yeah. okay, yeah. One, two, one, two, three. This little light of mine, wow. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, oh girl. This little light of mine. Under a bushel, yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, yeah. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Woo! That was so good! Oh my goodness! That was fun! Yay. That was amazing! Ah, that's scary! I don't like it! Make this love, make this die, no! Hold on! 
That's the best that this brain trust can come up with, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe speaking of brains, let's talk about the science of worship. I'm gonna try to explain this in the simplest way possible. So scholars and researchers have done tons of study on the brain during worship. Like what happens in our minds when we worship and sing to God. When we listen to music, any music, not just worship music, a lot of our brain is really active, especially the areas that process sound. But also, your brain is active in your left temporal lobe, that's where language happens. And in the right hemisphere, that's where creativity happens. And in your corpus callosum, that's the channel of neuropathways between both hemispheres of your brain. See, there's one level of neuroactivity associated with just listening to music, but there's a whole nother level of activity that happens when it comes to actively participating in or creating together as we do when we're singing. When you look at what happens in a room full of Christians singing praise music, it's incredibly participatory compared to just being at a concert or listening in your car. Everyone who is singing along is contributing to the environment of the room. And that, that whole, we're all in this together, it amplifies the effects that music has on our thoughts and our awareness. And this comes with lots of benefits. First, an increased capacity to process language. Second, a positive state of mind. Third, a higher sense of self-worth and self-esteem. When we worship together, a room full of brains start to create these neurological patterns that are similar to each other. We see this in a brain scan. As people start to contemplate everything that's happening, the lyrics, the singing, the environment of the room, you start to rise and transcend your focus beyond yourself. You go from thinking about yourself and your needs, to your family, to your community, to your city, to your part of the world, to all of humanity, and then ultimately to God. You see, worship steps you into these broader views of reality. This transcendent state is amplified by the music and by everyone doing it together. And because of our social identities, because of the power of music, because of the participation that's happening, it creates such an elevated experience it gives a greater chance for other people to join in and to experience God. So yeah, worship is not just about singing. Worship actually helps us say, it's not about me. Worship unifies us with God and others. Love the Lord your God 
With all your heart and soul and mind, love your neighbor as yourself. That was so good! <gasps> Do you mind if we ask you a couple more questions about worship? I would love that. Yes. Okay. Starting with, what does the word worship mean? Worship actually comes from an old English word, worthship, which just means to give something worth oh, value yeah. or to give honor to something. Thing is, with worshiping God, God is already worthy without our worship. So worshiping God is all about just giving him honor mm. every single day. It's about getting up and singing and dancing, celebrating, but it's more than that. Every little thing that you do can be an act of worship if it's done to honor God. Nice. Awesome. That's good. I know that sometimes when people worship, they'll say hallelujah. So what does that mean? Yeah. Hallelujah is just shorthand for everybody praise Yahweh, which is a really important and special word for God. So let's all praise God. Awesome. And so what does it mean to live a life of worship? What a good question. Um, you know, what's funny about that is I think everyone lives a life of worship. It's just a question of what you are worshiping, mm -hmm. right? Because I can live my life trying to, just thinking about myself and trying to do good things for me or focused on what my friends think and mm -hmm. trying to please them. Or I can live my life, every single thing that I do, trying to honor God. Yeah. I know that sometimes I seek people's approval maybe more than I do God's approval. That's probably one way that I that I don't quite live a life of worship. Sometimes even just with busyness of life and everything, mm -hmm. I think I can forget that God is worthy of worship. And nice. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought of that with my brain. That was so I like good. It. Worthy of yeah. worship. <laughs> yeah. So there's this woman, and she's at a well. Why is she at the well? Well, this is a time where there's like no running water. I mean, like no faucets, no water bottles, no toilets. Dark days. Like, if you wanted water, which you need to live, you had to sometimes walk miles, carry a bucket throw it in the well, pull it out with a rope, then carry this water all the way back home to live and do it every single day. <sighs> Only three more. Why is she at the well? Well, she has a need. When she's there, she meets Jesus. And she doesn't really know who he is or why he is talking to her. Like, it's very weird that he would be talking to her, but he is. And I start to talk about worship and what's the right place to worship and where we're supposed to worship. And Jesus basically says, you know, God really doesn't care about those things. What God really wants when we worship is that we would worship him in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? He doesn't really care so much that we're raising our hands and we look good, but He cares that our spirit is right and we're worshiping Him from the inside out. He cares about the truth. It doesn't matter where you are, when you are, how it looks, or even if you feel like worshiping, that we would worship Him in the truth of who He is, and that's good all the time. And as he's talking, she starts to recognize who Jesus is. Like, he's the Messiah. He's the King of Kings. And not only that, he's talking to her. He doesn't make her feel judged or excluded because of who she is or what she's done or what she doesn't know about God. But he makes her feel invited to worship, that she is called to be a part because that's who Jesus is. We all have these needs and, and Jesus isn't just here to meet our needs just like this one time, but it's eternal. See, Jesus isn't just a sip of water. He's the living water inside of us, continually refreshing us and meeting our needs and filling us. And because of that, we can't help but be different. Like, look at this lady's response. Like, she goes, she realizes who Jesus is for like a half, like very short conversation and she leaves her water pot behind and she goes and she tells all of her friends about the Jesus she just met. You see, in that moment, her heart and her mind and her soul were transformed and all she wanted to do because of that was worship. 
sing about the loop show. <laughs> we talk about worship. And stuff. And worship. That's right. <laughs> More than just singing, living a life. Living a life of worship. Living a life of worship starts with getting up, ready and excited to worship God for everything he's done. With a variety of postures, we can thank God and give him the devotion that he deserves. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us, Luke. And for answering all of our questions about worship. But what if we have more questions? Well, this month we are talking all about worship, so we will have many more opportunities to dive in deeper. Yes, and reach out. We love helping you look for answers. Thank you. Oh, do you want to help us sign off? Wait, okay, I know that we said that worship is more than just singing, but for this one, can we sing it? Yes! <laughs> Yay! Okay. Ready? Enjoy, Enjoy the ride. ride! Worship is putting God first with our heart, soul, and mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what we get to be a part of. We thank you for all of the great things that you've done in our lives, and we just thank you for simply who you are, that you love us deeply. And we know that we can come to you with whatever we have because you are there for us. What I know is that there are some of you who maybe you're here today and this whole idea of worshiping God is new to you because maybe for you, you've had this idea of who God is that is so much different than who he really is because who God is, he is love and he loves you and he wants a relationship with you so much so that he came down to earth in the person of Jesus, right? He became a human being so that he could do life with us, so that God could be with us in person. And that person, Jesus, lived a perfect life. He died a brutal death on the cross for your sins and for mine, so that anybody who puts their trust in him could be saved, could be made new. And maybe you're here today for the first time to put God first with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Because when you do that, everything changes. You become a new person, not just a better person, but a new person. I believe that that's why many of you are here today, to say yes to Jesus for the very first time, to truly worship God for the first time. So if that's you and you wanna say yes to Jesus, to become his follower, to be made completely new, if you wanna give your life to Christ, then simply lift your hand right now. All over the place, people are making that choice to say yes to Jesus today. And we wanna celebrate with you and we want to pray with you. So please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning away from my old life. I'm turning towards you. I worship you with my heart, my soul, and my mind. I put you first. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, somebody, celebrate and make some noise because that's the best choice you could ever make in your life. In that moment, you became a new person. So please tell somebody about it, right? Tell your friend, tell your small group leader, tell your parents that you made the choice to follow Jesus today. Praise God, if you made that decision today, I'm so happy for you. I don't, honestly, like, my heart is like a little bubble that's about to pop, so you better not give me any more good news because that's the best news. So for all of us, whether you've just made that decision right now and you're about to tell an adult, or you've been walking with Jesus for a long time, we're gonna do something together. We're gonna go into the YouVersion Bible app and we're going to search for live a life of worship. So go and look that up. That's the Bible plan that was made especially for you. After you've done that, why don't you come back to this video and write in what is your favorite verse? Maybe we'll make a song about it in the future. What is your favorite verse that gets you through the hard times, the good times, the times where you wanna celebrate, the times where you wanna worship? What, what kind of gets you in, in, in a mood of remembering who God is? Go ahead and write that in the comments. Next, we're going into our discussions. Uh, so grab an adult, grab a, a family member, and, uh, and let's talk about these. What is a life of worship? <laughs>